What really is reflected power? In previous videos, we've discussed the myth that reflected power is lost. One commenter said, well, how about a video on what reflected power is? Let's cover some transmission line basics. If we don't understand those, we'll have difficulty understanding reflected power. So first, let's review what happens when everything matches and we have a no-loss transmission line. Here we have a transmitter with a 50 ohm output impedance, a 50 ohm coax transmission line, and a 50 ohm load like an antenna. Now, in this situation, all power sent from the source will be dissipated in the load. There is no reflected power. The SWR is one to one. There are no standing waves. Now, what if instead of a 50 ohm load, it's an open circuit? Since that is not an acceptable load, all power is reflected back to the source. Also, the reflected current gets a 180 degree phase shift. What if instead of an open circuit, there is a short circuit? Same thing. All the power is reflected back to the source, but this time the reflected voltage gets a 180 degree phase shift. You obviously can't transmit into an open or a short circuit. That would be like trying to listen to your hi-fi system with the speakers either disconnected or shorted. But an antenna, like a proper dipole, will accept your transmitter power and is close to 100% efficient. A dipole at its resonant frequency has an impedance of about 70 ohms, which is higher than the coax impedance, which is 50 ohms, so you don't have a perfect match here. So, in this case, the SWR will be 1.4 to 1, and the reflected power will be 3 watts. And, since the antenna impedance is higher than the line impedance, the reflected current gets a phase shift, like with an open circuit. What's the connection between SWR, the standing wave ratio, and reflected power? Well, you can't have one without the other. The higher the SWR, the higher the reflected power. What is SWR? Think of voltage on a transmission line. The voltage in the reflected power is going to cross paths with voltage from the source or forward power since they're out of phase. This creates voltage high and low points. That voltage difference is expressed as a ratio, like 2 to 1. To calculate SWR, the SWR meter typically measures voltage, VSWR, or VSWR, and converts it to power. Many SWR meters display both SWR and reflected power. The higher the mismatch at the antenna, the higher the SWR, and the higher the reflected power. So what happens to reflected power? Well, this is where the myths come in. Some say it all turns to heat in the transmission line or at the source, like an antenna tuner. Now, here's why neither is true. The impedance match created by the tuner is only one way from the source to the load. That's why we have this one-way sign here. So, when a reflected wave arrives back at the antenna tuner, it sees either a very high or very low impedance mismatch, like either a short or open circuit. So, it all gets reflected back to the antenna. It is blocked from getting past your antenna tuner. That's why we have this do not enter sign here. If you could have a transmission line with no loss, like in the examples we've been using, no reflected power is lost, as it makes a couple of trips back and forth 
in the transmission line. So in real life, the only loss is caused by the characteristic loss of the coax plus the additional loss created by SWR. With moderate levels of SWR in the HF bands and good quality coax, very little reflected power is lost. The rest of it has to go somewhere, so it bounces back to the antenna and is radiated. There's no place else for it to go. Now this is easy to show with this online coax calculator. Let's use a really super low loss coax cable LDF4-50A, 100 feet of cable, 14 megahertz, the 20 meter band, SWR of 1 to 1, which is no standing waves and no reflected power, power input 100 watts, calculate. So let's say 95 watts reaches the load. Now this demonstrates the characteristic loss of this cable. Now let's give it some SWR, an SWR of 3 to 1. That creates 25 watts of reflected power. Remember that. Calculate. Now 91 watts is reaching the load instead of 95. The mismatch is causing an additional loss of 4 watts. So, even though we have 25 watts of reflected power, the total additional loss caused by the mismatch, giving us a 3 to 1 SWR, is only 4 watts. Our reflected power is not lost. To quote the ARRL antenna book, the antenna bible for ham radio operators, in lines having attenuation, all power entering the line is absorbed by the load except for that lost because of attenuation. So, that's the simplified explanation of what reflected power is and how it's not lost. Consider subscribing to this channel in 73.